Hi everyone, in this demo, we are going to look at how we can make use of the Ansible Automation Platform to perform JBoss EAP Server Upgrade. If we were to look at the usual migration strategy, what we will be doing is to upgrade the server as well as to migrate the application and make sure that they work properly in the new JBoss EAP instance. So the demo that we are looking at today, we'll be looking at how we can upgrade a JBoss EAP 7.3 to 7.4. There are different migration tools available that can be used. There is the application migration toolkit as well as the server migration tool. So in this demo, we are going to mainly look at the server migration tool. If we were to look at the JBoss EAP upgrade workflow within the Ansible automation platform, you can see that we start off by doing a pre-help check, followed by a decision point on whether to proceed with the upgrade. Once the approval is granted, we will perform the upgrade using Ansible Automation and then perform a health check. If the health check fails, we are going to perform a rollback and make sure that the system restores back to where it was initially. So let's proceed next to look at the environment itself. So over here, we have three different EAP servers running in the VMware environment. We have a Nexus as well as a web host server that is hosting the different zip files required for the upgrades. So in this case, we can see that the Hello World application right, for App 1 and App 2 are all hosted in the Nexus repository with all this information. Ansible is going to go into the repository to retrieve the artifacts as part of the workflow. So this is my web server that's hosting the EAP 7.23 and 4 zip files. Right? We are using the zip files to basically perform the upgrade. So let's look at what we have. Right. So I have three different servers. This is the app one running on the first server. Right. Right. So you can see that this is server number one. You can see that everything is running on 7.3. This is the 236 server, which is the second server. The application is running without issues. And for the second server, the logs is also running on 7.3. This is the application tool running on a different port on the same server for server number two. So in this particular scenario, right, we have multiple applications running on the same server. So as you can see, this is still the same second server running the second application. And this is the third server, right? With app one, JBoss server three, right? So we have multiple servers over here running the same application. So the automation workflow itself is able to upgrade all the servers at the same time, right? So let's just go into the Ansible automation platform, right? You can see that we will come in as the JBoss engineer. This is the dashboard itself, right? We have different templates, which is basically similar to the workflow that we seen earlier. So the visualizer itself, right? Same stuff. So if we were to look at one of the servers itself, so this is the second server. You can see that pretty much within the JBoss EAP 7.3 folder, you will see all the applications that has been deployed on this uh, particular server itself, right? So there are basically two applications running. If we were to look at the processes, you can see as well that there is an app 2 and an app 1, right? So this is what we have within the environment. Right? So what's going to happen next is that we will just do parallel upgrades across all the servers. And we will be able to see that, you know, our new folders and directories are created, backup directories are created, etc. Right? So let's just take a quick look. So then back here, right, what we want to do is we want to launch a workflow. So you can see that instead of one service, we will target the whole group of 
EAP servers, right? The whole group, we want to move them from 7.3 to 7.4, right? The EAP zip file download link, right? As we seen on the file server earlier on, it is going to download the zip, unzip, and then perform the necessary uh, actions, right? So backup directory, where we want to back up the application to, right? And the port itself, right? Where we can get the Maven artifact as well, right? So other things involved as well, right? The wall files. Of course, right, uh, we want to do a uh, health check. So as you can see over here that this is a rather simple uh, application. We're just checking whether we get back a 200 OK for the response, plus we get the string that we are expecting. So in this case, I'm checking whether I'm getting a Hello World app one string coming back, right? So let's just uh, hit next and then we launch it. So you can see that it ran the check across all the three servers and every one of them replies with the string that it is expecting, right? So we get the expected results, we get a 200 okay, so everything is good. So it moves on to the next stage. So if we were to look at here, right, there's a pending workflow, but as a JBoss engineer, I'm not able to approve or deny, right? I have to come in as a the change request admin before I can actually uh, approve the workflow for it to continue on. Right, so I'm going to come in as the change request admin. So the same workflow approval. This time around, as the change request admin, I'm able to approve it. So let's just go back as the JBoss engineer. So you can see over here that the workflow has continued to run. So let's just see what's going on. Right? We kind of stop the services, we create a backup directory, we back up the existing configurations, we download the zip files that's needed from the web server, we create a directory for the target, and then we unzip the packages, and after which, you know, we ran the migration tool that we saw in the earlier slides. And then after that, we get the wall file from um, Nexus, right? And then we start off the JBoss service to make sure that uh, everything is uh, working properly. Before we deploy the application and clear off all the files that is not required from the system, right? So if we were to look at the migration tool, printout itself, you can see that we ran through the JBoss server migration.sh, right? Specify the source and obviously we set it to non-interactive in nature, right? So when we run this, you can see that it runs through all the migration to pass on the configurations from the existing uh, to the target, right? To make sure that everything is consistent by design and configurations. And at the end of which, you can see that the migration result is successful. Right? So when everything is good, it moves on to do the rest of the stuff, like deploying the uh, wall file, starting the JBoss services, right? and uh, making sure that everything is done in a nice way. It looks good. So let's just go back to the job. The workflow itself, we can see that the post health check is good as well. Right? So everything is returning as all working as expected, right? So let's just uh, check, right? So this is the first server for application one. We see that the app is running. This is 7.3, right? So let's just do a refresh. You can see that 7.4 has been deployed. Application continues to run without issues. So this is the second application server, right? Same thing, right? We do another refresh. 7.4 has been deployed. So, I mean, obviously, we did not touch the second application, right? So, if you were to do a reload on the second app, nothing would have changed, right? So, it's still going to run on 7.3. As sent over here, right? So, in most cases, we are going to migrate application and upgrade the system one at a time, right? Making sure that everything is working properly, right? So, um, that's why you can see us splitting it. 
So then this is the third server. So from 7.3, it is also going to be upgraded to 7.4. Right? So everything is upgraded. Okay, so let's look at the, that directory structure itself. Right? So what do we have? So now we see that within the 7.3 folder, app1 has been moved out within 7.4. App1 is now in 7.4, right? And the backup itself, we can see that it now has the backup for the application one, right? So everything has been done nicely, right? Just with one click, you're able to upgrade multiple servers with the same applications from a lower version of JBoss EAP to a higher version of JBoss EAP without any issues. So before we end off the demo, I just wanted to show you guys that we can actually do a rollback easily as well, right? So we just have to hit launch. Same thing, right? We target the same group of servers. So just ignore the fact that, you know, the current and the target is in such a way, right? Because we kind of assume that this is one single workflow. So if you consider from a workflow perspective and this only gets triggered if something happens, then of course, you know, the current is going to be 7.3 and the target will be 7.4. If this is standalone job template by itself, then this will have to swap, right? And over here, of course, you know, this is our app one. We just uh, have to specify where all the backup is being stored. Then when we do the rollback, it will basically restore everything back to where it was. So let's just run it. So we'll stop the service. We will restore the backup folder. And then we will start off the server as well, right? So this is all good. So let's just check, right? So what do we have? You can see now that within the 73 folder, app01 has been moved back. App04 is not empty, right? Because we have restored everything. Of course, we did not touch the backup directory. You know, whatever that's inside remains inside, right? But, you know, you are free to change it if you want. So this concludes our demo, right? Hopefully you guys find it easy to use the Ansible automation to go and perform EAP server upgrade, which can also include the rollback mechanism. All right, thank you for watching.